Well guys, we got another project here. There's a never ending amount of projects that I'm always consumed with. Uh, but I know that everybody's probably wondering about the pack R. Uh, so we got some pretty good guys that work up there, our local dealer here for Kenworth. Uh, and they're doing whatever they can to warranty the engine. But the problem is there's none available. That's the problem. There, there are no engines, no short blocks, no long blocks, no nothing available. At this point, I don't really know what we're going to do. Uh, I sent those. They didn't even want it towed down there. They just said, send us some pictures. And they looked at the pictures. And they said, yeah, that's not right. <laughs> so, um, you know, the service manager, I used to work with him years ago. And he said, he said, you know how many engines we've seen that have been run out of oil? And he said, they've run clear out of oil. But you know what? The rod bushings were still in the end of the rod. He said, those were not put in correctly kind of what I thought it's nice talking to somebody with two brain cells uh, anyways uh, so uh, I don't know what we're gonna do we're gonna play a little bit of a waiting game but we've you know we might we might either end up stripping that one down and fixing it ourselves or we might wind up putting the Cummins in it and taking that whole engine that whole damn shit and caboodle back and say hey give us our money back we're gonna go put it towards something else so i don't know yet it's kind of a we're kind of waiting to see what happens here um so on to other things 2950 john deere okay my customer over there dan in uh lakeview he's got another one that you guys saw a video on he actually recently just purchased this tractor here uh, I think he got it up there in Washington somewhere. I think Sunnyside or somewhere up there. Uh, anyway, he had another, he's got another 2950 that he's had, and I think I did a video on it where I had the cab off and split the tractor in two, and it had a bad shift fork, if, if I remember right, on range two, because these will have a, they'll have a high-low clutch pack, PTO clutch pack, but everything else is just going to be a, a range shift where you're going to have a, uh, you know, you're gonna have your speed your speeds and your range first reverse and second if I remember on his it was second That wasn't working right if I remember right um, Don't recall completely, but anyway this one here has got problems uh, Hydraulic problems so based on my experience of Working these tractors. I've worked on a ton of these um Usually when you get a tractor like this on a 2950, say even a 2755 or a 3155 or, uh, you know, any of these like this, this kind of vintage here, if you've got no steering, you've got no uh, mechanical front wheel drive, it means it won't release. Because, again, yeah, remember, you got a spring-loaded clutch pack. It's going to take oil pressure to release it. That means if it's always in full wheel drive, and it won't release and say you say you combining all these failures into one group here you got no steering you got no release of the full drive your pto isn't working another thing that you're going to notice too is if you've got no pto clutch brake and if your pto is always turning too so there's a lot of things involved here so what we're doing here, we've got no remotes and the hitch won't raise up. So basically the tractor has no hydraulics at all. So that's usually pointing towards a charge pressure problem. You're not getting charge pressure to your main pump. Your main pump is a radial piston pump. This is a closed center radial piston pump. Runs off the front of the crankshaft up here. Okay, and you'll see this line right here let me get this light right here. This pressure line going into this pump, that's getting fed down the frame rail here, comes out of this little block here. Well, there's a surge relief valve in here too. That's another thing that'll cause problems. So right now I've got what they call a JD387 test plate hooked into where the, I don't know if the camera can see that, I've got that hooked in. You pull the transmission filter out, take the O-ring that goes on the filter housing and put it on your test plate. And there's arrows on flow. You gotta make sure the 
you got to get this hooked up right to where your oil is flowing through your flow meter the correctly in the right direction so there's arrows on your test plate to where you hook your hoses at so right now what i've got is i'm supposed to have about seven gallons per minute if i've got uh, if i've got half inch hoses which is what i've got on my test flow meter it tells you right in the book there if you've got half inch hoses with half inch restriction that you've got to run it at 1500 rpm and you should have around seven gallons per minute and I'm right at around seven gallons per minute. I'm pretty damn close. So the next thing that we've got to check in this whole equation is we've got to hook into. Uh, we've got to take this line loose right here. This is the discharge line coming from the charge. Charge pressure will go through this line, and this will feed our main pump. And this will tell us whether our surge relief valve. If it's stuck open or something's wrong with it and it's not and it's not getting the charge pressure back to the main pump so that's the next thing I, I think we've got a problem with we're not getting any charge pressure to our main pump and there's another thing says there's other things that can be involved as well we could be losing charge pressure up in this up in the shift cover too on the transmission it could be dumping it all right there as well all right guys, I kind of misled you a little bit on that. Okay, so that oil comes out, goes through the oil filter that where I've got my test plate on there. Then it goes up to the valve block and then it goes through the surge relief valve after another valve, a pressure regulating valve in the valve block for the transmission shift valves. Uh, let's read about that. Okay, filtered oil is forwarded to transmission shift cover where pressure regulating valve Adjusted by shims opens first stage at pressure of 110 psi with this opening of the valve oil is forwarded to PTO control valve You know spool full drive so See we don't have any of that we have no PTO none of that So what I think what we need to be looking at is we need to start plugging in so The way this works guys and that's just exactly what I told Dan on the phone is most of the time on these tractors what happens is you'll see this this little valve block right here where the surge relief valve and the oil comes out there's tubes inside here and usually what happens is that oil and I'm kind of wondering I'm kind of wondering we need to check up there that relief valve might be causing problems. You know what? We might have to pull that relief valve out of there. Uh, but we need to... We need to check up here. Before we check here to this main pump, because if it ain't right up here, when it goes into this pressure regulating valve, it's never going to let the oil come back into this line to go into the main pump. So, because we don't have anything. We got to look at that function of it we have no pto we have none of that we have none of those low pressure functions which come off up here but we got to get the floor uh the rubber out of the floor mat and all that shit out of there so we can start testing up there and put some gauges up there and see what our pressure is okay guys so i've got a gauge hooked to the inlet pressure port on the control valve right here that's going right there zero to 300 psi gauge and then you want to come over here too which i can tell you right now that we're ha we're not getting any oil to our main pump i mean usually when you pull this plug there's oil coming out of there and you can look in there they're not even wet i mean the the, the there's no oil going to it uh but we'll, we'll we'll follow the procedure anyway so pull that o-ring boss plug out which come out of that tractor right there just like that now years ago <laughs> I've had to dig this stuff out and find it again. I was testing one of these and I had to make my own stuff. So I took another I took another plug that I had, I drilled it out and I tapped it to quarter inch mill pipe. And then I can put this uh, quarter inch mill brass adapter in it. And then it goes to number four mill JIC. And then I can hook this hose to it here. This one's got a 45 female JIC swivel on the end. And then I can thread my quarter inch male pipe uh, 0 to 300 PSI gauge in here. 
so and then we can fire it up at 2000 rpm let's see what the book says you're supposed to have wakey wakey eggs and bakey um inlet pressure test equipment so you're supposed to have don't worry about the d this is a new pump the newer style pumps don't require the d-stroke valve put in them um so there's that gauge they're showing you right there for inlet pressure and so clutch pressure test equipment okay so you go down here standby pressure test equipment if additional equipment is available standby pressure test equipment can be installed at this time which we're not really worried about that right now we're not going to have standby pressure because we have no oil going to the main pump we know that pretty much um and then they're telling you to do all this high pressure sump leak check we're not worried about that right now because right now we have no hydraulics we know we have a lack of oil going to our main pump so come down here skip a bunch of that stuff there clutch element leak check um cooler relief valve check see now that's kind of where i'm kind of going with this oil is too cool or there's an internal restriction See, a way that we can isolate this is probably go down to 12. Clutch and inlet pressure check. That's what I want to see right there. Um, I've already done that. I've already uh, cycled my mechanical front wheel drive. I've cycled a PTO. I know that my PTO clutch brake's not working either. Uh, and it didn't make any difference with any functions. Uh, the charge, the flow didn't decrease or none. I mean, it didn't change anything. So what we want to do, place all control valves in neutral position, run engine at 2,000 RPM. Okay, record inlet pressure 6. Clutch pressure spec is 145 to 155 PSI. Inlet pressure spec is going to be... We're not going to get the oil warm like they want it. We have no flow. We have... We have you're not going to get the oil warm. It's not going to happen. Uh, so you're just going to have to guesstimate because you have no oil flow. So we'll just go off the 100 degree mark. So at 100 degrees, you're supposed to have 50 psi, and 145 to 155 psi. So let me get this gauge hooked up to the inlet pressure port on the pump, and we'll go from there. All right, guys. So we've got a gauge. Remember, our spec on the inlet pressure is like 50 psi, which I'm gonna. I got a feeling we're gonna see zero. <laughs> Yeah, 50 psi to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which we're not going to do. And then 145 to 155 psi on the clutch inlet pressure. So, got it rigged up, you can see that. Going to my, got the gauge running around here. I got a 0 to 100 psi gauge on there. And I got the steering wheel zip tied up because the tilt's screwed up and it keeps falling down and getting in the way. So let's fire it up, see what we got here. Get this gauge around here, maybe where we can read it. Of course the gauge is twisted to where it always wants to go face down. So 2000 RPM is the specification, so just basically wind it up. So we have 75 PSI on the clutch inlet pressure, which is low. And we have zero PSI on the inlet pressure to the main pump. So we know we are getting absolutely no oil to our main pump and we're getting low inlet pressure. So no wonder the hydraulics aren't working. Nothing's gonna work right. We have a tube inside broke, I think is what's happening. So if you go okay or low, because the other one's low or high. And this one's okay, okay. So you go okay or low on clutch inlet pressure. And this says low. Go to 14. Skip 13, go to 14. 
Transmission oil pump air leakage check. Stall open end of jumper hose from right side return of left hand SEV to trans filler tube. Note if SEV return is not connected to ported filter cover, connect flow meter inlet hose to filter cover. Install open end of meter outlet hose into transmission filler opening. If you're using a flow meter instead of an SEV open flow control valve to flow a small amount of oil to sump. Uh, let's see here. We're use I think we're going to use a flow meter. Um, let me let me read over this so I know what the hell I'm getting into here. It's been a while since I went over this. The problem that I'm having here, what they're what they're wanting you to do is 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 put the return side of the SEV and let the oil run in and activate the SEV, the selective control valve, into a bucket. And they're wanting you to see if there's a big foamy layer of oil in the bucket after you run this oil into the bucket or you can run it off uh you can put your filter cover back on and you can you can put your filter cover back on and hook your flow meter to this the inlet and you can put the outlet into a bucket but the problem with that whole theory is i mean that's they're they're they're, they're banking on return flow which we already know that we don't have any oil going to this pump. So that means you're not going to get any oil going back here. There ain't going to be nothing there to check. That's that's the problem with that procedure. There ain't shit going there. So I don't I don't think we're going to even mess with that. Um So I've already checked and I've got 7 gallons per minute off the charge pump itself. So they want you to connect the charge pump now. So if you go, no air in oil. So I don't think there's any air in oil. We'll say go to 15. I might be wrong, but I don't think that test is going to be a very accurate way. We, we know we don't have any oil back there. Okay, connect flow meter for transmission pump check. Uh, we've already got, already got that hooked up, and we've already checked that. We've got, uh, go to 16. Transmission pump flow check at 2,000 RPM. We could check that real quick. Again, but, you know, on a 1,500 RPM, you're going to have 7 to 8 gallons per minute. Okay. Uh, transmission pump check. Um, blah, blah, blah. So... CP flow meters with half inch ID hoses have greater oil restriction. Decrease engine RPM to 1500 RPM. Um, which it's kind of hard to tell on this because the tachometer is not working on it. Uh, but you, you'll get close here. So let's, let's just look at that real quick. We'll fire it back up. I hate running this thing too long so we know we're not getting any oil to that damn pump. We're going to screw that brand new pump up. Doing all this testing, it kind of worries me a little bit. I'd say that's probably close to 1500 there. The flow is pretty close to being right. I mean, it's around seven, eight gallons. So we got a leak is what we got going on here is what I think. Either that or we got, so, so if it's in spec, you go to 20. I think it's in spec. T 
Testing for charge flow to main pump. I think that's where we want to hook in right here. And I'll have to hook in a damn gauge. Or a... I bet you can pull this damn line off right here. See, this line... Let's see, which line are we looking at? This line right here comes in and goes right into this block. And I remember there's a tube coming down in to this block to feed this. It loops up into this valve block, comes back down, if I remember, and it comes back in and feeds this. Huh. Well, I'm willing to bet there's something going on. If there with a cooler relief valve, it's stuck wide open. There's not a drop of oil. Usually when you split these tractors or anything, you pull this line off, oil just comes running out of here. It's bone dry. There's no oil going to the main pump at all. I mean, it's, it's wet right there, but you watch this. I'm gonna leave the, I've done this before. <laughs> uh, pull the, pull that lever out and then crank on it a little bit. Where in the hell is the key switch at? There's nothing there, guys. There is nothing there at all. Now I'll start it. Absolutely no oil going to the main pump whatsoever. Okay, so that is the inlet to your main pump, and there is nothing, nothing going to it. I'm on the right line, make sure I'm on the right damn line. I'm pretty certain I am. It's gonna be, it's this one right here, which is gonna go in right here. Okay, so pretty certain we got a, let's go see what that says there on that book. So basically they want you to hook. We don't even need to, we don't need to do that. They want you to hook. Basically, they want you to hook in where I took this union apart on the line. They want you to unhook it right here. Hook a gauge to the metal side of this fitting, or back there, I'm on the wrong line. Back there, they want you to hook something to the metal side of that fitting, and then come up here and pull the line off back here and hook into that. Well, there's no need to do that. So if it's if it's oak if I'll go to twenty one curler relief valve check all control valves in neutral we would say definitely that it's out of spec go to twenty two inspect and adjusting cooler relief valve okay add shims B to increase pressure remove shims to decrease pressure so that cooler relief valve. I'm trying to look at this picture here. I think it's right here in the back side of this block. Right here, I think. So, oil's coming out. What's this one here? What's this line doing? That is... That's, so that's going up to the cooler right there. So, I think it's this valve right back here on the back side of that block. Yeah, that's what it is. We gotta pull this valve out right here and look at that. I need to blow some of that shit off of there. And then we'll, we'll pull this valve out of there and see what we got. So basically, here's where we're at. Uh, we know, I pulled the, uh, the cooler relief valve out there's nothing wrong with that cooler relief valve um, but what's going on there's not enough pressure to shift this relief valve over to allow the oil to go back in to the circuit so if you can pull the ball out of the system and you'll get oil dripping out that line now so we know that we're not getting any oil flow through there at all so I mean you can put a 
a flow meter on there, but there's really no need in doing that, really. Um, we know now to check for the following the restriction in inlet line between clutch housing and main pump, which I don't suspect there's anything there. Um, leakage of O-rings on automatic downshift valve, leakage of O-rings tube or gasket at clutch control valve housing, leakage of O-rings or tube between filter relief valve and clutch control valve housing, leakage of O-rings or tube between clutch control valve housing and cooler relief valve includes special adapter in clutch housing. So, the next thing that we got to do that's we might be able to get away with without separating the tractor is we can pull this clutch valve housing off of here this control valve in the tractor see what i'm saying we should be able to pull this off and get it out of there uh we'll pull our gauge out and we'll pull this the wirings off of it and I'll blow it off real good and we'll pull this out and see if we can see anything there on this uh and sometimes you can look down in there and see your tube crack too so that's where we're going next okay so you got o-rings in all these patches but i'm going to show you what i found it's not on this but so here's our inlet port and that inlet port as you can see lines up with this tube that comes in it that tube will come from the cooler relief valve, which comes through. So I grabbed this tube just barely to see what was going on. And this should not do this. This is the tube that feeds that with oil. And somebody had this tractor split in two and did not get this in there right. There's your problem right there. That tube is clear out of there. It's amazing that it got any oil at all somebody didn't get that in there right I bet they because I'm seeing something here I'm seeing I'm seeing silicone on this tractor where it's been split in two right here I'm seeing silicone right there somebody had this tractor split in two and didn't do that right and then get that back together right I don't know if we can drain this oil I don't know if we can get down in there or not and fix that or if we're going to have to split it and fix that right. I'm not sure what we're going to do here, but you can't even see it until you get some of the oil drained down in it. Yeah, it's it's just not put in there right. I wonder if I can get that clear out of there and see the condition of it a little bit better. I'd like to get it around that other tube. There's what I'd like to do. Don't know if I'm going to be able to do that though. I might. I don't think I can get it around it. Yeah, I just can't seem to get it around that tube, that other one. So I don't know. I'm trying to see that i can't tell if that's cracked down there on the end there they didn't get something right here when they did this you can kind of feel it going in there huh you can see where it elbows and it goes back in there. I bet the O-ring's torn or something too. <sighs> okay, well, we kind of know where we're going with this. And that makes a lot of sense now. It was partially in there. And it makes you wonder if they, they, they knew they screwed up and they didn't want to split the tractor back in two to fix their screw up. So they kind of jerry-rigged it in there. I don't really know what they did here. But I've done a hundred of these things, and that doesn't come out of there like that. There's a bracket in the ear that holds that, too, if I remember correctly. Oh, I remember. Yeah, that. Yeah, it goes behind that right there. It goes behind that ear right there. Oh, I wonder if we can... I wonder if we can take that keeper. See that keeper right there? That tube goes in behind that keeper. I might drain the oil down far enough to where I can see it back in there. 
and try to get this behind that keeper. But I gotta drain the oil down far enough where I can see where it goes back in that main case. Okay, so I got that tube in there, I think, correctly. We're going to see now if we get any inlet pressure on our gauge. Uh, I don't have everything secured completely here. I'm going to have to bleed the clutch again because uh, I took that line off. But uh, let's fire it up. So, there you go, folks. It pays to do some testing. So all that testing saved us from splitting the tractor in two. Somebody assembled this thing incorrectly is what happened. And they didn't get the tube in there right. And I don't, I don't know the history of it. I don't know if they separated the tractor and fixed something like the high-low clutch pack in it or what they did to it. Whatever they did when they put it back together, I don't know if they said, well, you know, you got a hydraulic pump out too. Or who knows, maybe they split it. Maybe some some guy that owned it himself split it in two, attempted to do it. And um, put it back together, nothing worked, and he just decided to get rid of it. And then some other guy bought it, and he said, well, I know what's wrong with them hydraulics. That pump's out. He put a main pump in it. I don't know. Anyways, I got company, so I got to get rolling here. <laughs> 